Tamara, thanks very much for uh, making time to talk to me today. I think the question of the day is the uh, candidate status uh, for Georgia that was awarded by the Council of the EU and I would like to ask you how do you feel about it as a person, as a Georgian, as a former politician, as, a, as an active uh, person, a public intellectual in a way? Um, Gabriel, first of all, thank you very much for finding time uh, to devote a program to Georgia because it's very important. Uh, the issue of the EU integration has been extremely overwhelmingly important for Georgians and there was the big public joy on 8th of November when the European Commission decided to give the candidate status to Georgia and we expected that the European Council would approve this decision but still on 15th of December there was this once again joy and this happy moment that finally we got the candidate status because there have been some doubts and some suspicions uh, they, uh, we knew that the European Union was not happy with the reform that was carried out by the Georgian government from the last year, uh, from the last June, when they gave us the European perspective but not the candidate status, and outlined several priorities to fulfill. And we knew, it, as a civil society representative, I knew that not everything was, went quite well. In some respects, the reforms that have been implemented by the authorities have been very formal, not in good faith, and therefore we had these doubts and suspicions. And each time the journalists have been asking me, I was saying that, you know, I really hope, we are not sure, but we really hope that the EU will take into context this geopolitical situation that this, there is this window of opportunity open for Georgia and they will give us the candidate status. But now we still remain very critical of the Georgian authorities. In, in, in general, uh, to sum up what I'm saying is that uh, I think that this is a very big achievement for the Georgian state, for, for the Georgian public that really showed their aspiration for the European integration. For, for Georgians, it's like, you know, it's, it's, uh, European integration is not a pragmatic issue for them. It's more, it's more a symbolic nature. We identify, the majority of Georgians identify themselves as Europeans. And therefore, we always thought that it's our place to be to close and together with the European Union. Therefore, this decision was very important. We know that there will be a huge way ahead of us before really joining the European Union and becoming a, becoming a member. But still, this uh, first step, I think that was very important for everyone, for the government, for the opposition, for the public, for the civil society organizations. Indeed, it is a big achievement and yeah. my sincere congratulations to Thanks you so as a much. Georgian. I'm wondering, is the government committed enough to deliver the reforms required by the European Union? Um, that there was a very important decision taken uh, last year in 2022 in June. The European Commission differentiated between Ukraine and Moldova and Georgia on the other hand. Uh, Ukraine and Moldova have been granted the candidate status, but in relation to Georgia, as there have been some questions and doubts whether the authorities were really aspired to the membership of the European Union. We have been just given the candidates, uh, we have been given the European perspective. And the European Commission told the authorities that there are these 12 reforms, 12 priority areas where we want to see the reforms. And one of the, one, just to give you the idea, the, the major issue for the Georgian political spectrum is the deep polarization among the political parties. That the rival political parties, they call themselves rivals, they do not cooperate on any of the issues. And the European Commission said that you have to overcome this polarization. You have to sit down together uh, around the table and carry out in, uh, important reforms. Other priority was judiciary. Other priority was the oligarchization because we have oligarch in the country, very important, who directs the uh, politics of the uh, of, of the Georgian political elites, and also human protection of human rights, uh, quite uh, elite corruption, um, the 
freedom of expression, freedom of media, protection of journalists and, and like that, that, that there were several priorities. But what we have seen from June 2022 until today, the Georgian government did not really commit to implement the essence of the reforms that was outlined by the European Union. They, they adopted some of the legislation, but this legislation, in our belief, and this is also has been shared by the Venice Commission, for instance, that it wasn't implemented in good faith. What I'm saying is that, for instance, regarding the judiciary, they amended the law on common courts like multiple times, several times, but nevertheless it did not change the essence of the problem that the judges do not feel independent from the political pressure. In the uh, investigation of the crimes committed against the journalists, this was not effectively followed up. The, ol the oligarchization, uh, first the government said that they will adopt the similar law to the Ukrainian law, the oligarchization, that they dropped the idea, the Venice Commission criticized them a lot, and etc. So what I'm trying to say is that they have not been really very serious regarding the reforms, but they wanted to make this impression that they are working and there is work going on into the parliament, but still we, we thought that, that they, they really lacked um, the, the, this wasn't done in good faith, as I'm saying. And at the end, the European Commission really said that only three priorities of, out of 12 have been fully implemented, while the uh, remaining uh, nine uh, were either partially implemented or that there were serious problems. But nevertheless, as I said, uh, I'm very happy that the European Commission and finally the European Council took very important geopolitical decision. And they did not let Georgian public behind behind the doors and they did not separate it, the associated trio. Um, so Georgia is still together with Ukraine and Moldova though they are ahead of us because they will have their negotiations opened. Will uh, the commitment to continue reforms that would bring Georgia closer to the European Union play a role in the upcoming elections in your country? Yeah, we have very important parliamentary elections next year, in October of 2024, and I expect that uh, this uh, this closer to Europe, uh, getting closer to the Europe, will be the major issue of the campaign for all the political parties. But I think that the dispute will be who is more pro-European. Um, well, there have been some doubts about the genuine European aspiration of the ruling party. It was voiced not only from the civil society but also from the European Commission. And what I mean under that, uh, for instance, Georgia has resumed flights with Russia, while we know that the European Union closed their space for Russian airplanes. Still, this year, against this background of an ongoing aggressive war of Russia against Ukraine, Georgian authorities took the decision to resume direct flights from Georgia to Russia and it was uh, Europeans were left like really surprised by that decision. Also, um, the, for instance, there was a huge, huge topic for the civil society organizations when the authorities uh, started initiation of the draft law on foreign agents. This is very typical Russian law that was aimed against the civil society organizations in Georgia. Uh, this was done this March or this year and uh, there was a huge criticism coming from the European Commission and I know from the very high, high level European officials telling to the Georgian officials that if they will adopt the law this will be the nail on the, in the coffin of the Georgia's European um, aspirations but nevertheless the parliament proceeded and they adopted the law with the draft law with the first hearing and it was only after the very huge public protest that the government withdrew the draft. So these were the questions that actually made us think that the government at some point was sabotaging the process of the European integration and there were really questions regarding the genuinity of the aspirations of the Georgian authorities. But at the end of the day we have the candidate status and the government of Georgia still can benefit from it. They can say that, um, well, we did enough uh, and it was us who secured the candidate status for the Georgian public. It's not like that. 
And you can, you can feel that even in the public statements from the EU Commissioner, uh, the President of the European Council, who said that uh, the, uh, the uh, genuine aspirations of the Georgian public, genuine European aspirations, should be mirrored by the Georgian authority. So I think that this was a very direct hint that uh, when taking the decision on granting the status um, to, to Georgia, European Commission was thinking about the genuine aspiration of the Georgian public to become a member of the EU and they have been by this critical of the Georgian authorities. But nevertheless, what I'm trying to say is that the government will still benefit in the pre-election campaign with the fact that we finally got the candidate status and the rivalry will be about who is more pro-European. And I think for the Georgian opposition it's very important to demand the implementation genuinely and in good faith implementation of the priorities that were outlined by the European Commission to demand the reforms to study to that extent that the negotiations are opened for Georgia on the way to the European integration. So there, there will be this you know, for, for all the parties showing that I'm more pro-European. No, I am more pro-European. Speaking of Russia, apparently uh, there is uh, a uh, conflict of interest between uh, the EU and the Western General and Russia in the entire region uh, of Eastern Europe and South Caucasus. Uh, what is actually the relationship between the Georgian government and Russia? Uh, well, it's very difficult to sum up in very short, but I will try just to illustrate that after the August 2008 war between Georgia and Russia, when Russia attacked Georgia on our territory, um, the, the, the diplomatic relationships have, uh, there, there are no diplomatic relationships between the two countries. But after the um, change of the authorities from 2012, uh, at the beginning when we had the coalition government of the Georgian Dream together with other Western, uh, Western oriented countries, there was, a, there was a decision, I think, taken that to, to make um, the cooperation with the Russians like, more rational, not to be based on the like, hostile rhetoric, but to make it more rational. But I think that the time showed that this is not really working. For, for Russia, um, I mean, if you show that you are not resisting and you are not resilient, they are trying to increase their influence by all means. And from 2020, um, we, we have the ruling party still in power for how many years already? For 11 years. So it, it became more and more evident for me as an ordinary citizen of Georgia that this government is more oriented towards Russia. For instance, what I, what I mean under that, their rhetoric towards European Union became very hostile while they have been like kind of friendly, friendly relationship with the Russia. The di diplomatic relationship has not been resumed, but as I said, there have been direct flights resumed this year. We had huge number of Russians coming into the territory of Georgia. We know that the Russian businesses are, have, uh, have their bases in Georgia, etc. So I, um, and um, this, um, also, the important factor in that is the uh, Bidina Ivanishvili, who has been the former Prime Minister of Georgia and also stands behind, behind so the ruling party. Um, I think that um, uh, for Bidina Ivanishvili it's very important to, to have good relationship with Russia because he might be afraid of his um, personal security, family security, financial security and therefore this increases dependence of the Georgian political, ruling political elite on Russia. So this explains why we are not aligned with the EU foreign policy recommendations and directives. So this number has dropped. It's only 43%. Actually, this is one of the priority outlined for by the European Commission towards Georgia that this alignment should be increased and things like that. So I think the dependency on Russia has somehow increased during the last years, and um, but um, 
this this raised some doubts uh, in, uh, in in many circles and Georgian society that the Georgian ruling party is inclined to more cooperation and war relationships with Russia. My last question uh, is uh, a friendly one. Like in my country, after more than 30 years, uh, we regained uh, democracy. When we look back, uh, sometimes uh, you feel disappointment. We de definitely thought in 1990 that we would be, we would be much further than that <laughs> in 30 years. How does it feel for you as a Jordan? Uh, you know, do, do you think what do you think you know went wrong after you regained independence? What, uh, but perhaps you know you, you think uh, it's uh, it's still like positive. So how do you feel about the thirty years past thirty years that Georgia was struggling to build to transition to democracy and to build a solid, open liberal uh, political system? So th this is very good word that we have been struggling and we, we are still struggling in, in that in that terms as well. And we lost a lot of time. We lost a lot of time. We had we had internal conflicts, we have two occupied territories occupied by Russia, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, and we have this uh, frozen conflict in our territory. We also had inter internal fights. With, it, with each other, and they, they, we have very bad economic situation, poverty um, for, for, for many years. Uh, there have been some positive changes, of course, and, uh, but what was the decisive factor for the majority of Georgians that we wanted to move the, into the direction of the EU? We, we do not want to see ourselves as a back, backyard of Russia. And we do not want to, to remain to, to be in this sphere of influence of Russia. So we feel as Georgians that we belong to Europe. It, 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 it's a it's a like very inherited feeling in, in, in majority, overwhelming majority of Georgians. We are still struggling, so there there have been some uh, ups and downs. Um, we had we had different problems after this conflict. There was this economic stagnation. We had a huge level of corruption. And in 2003, when the government was changed, the major topic for most of the Georgians was that corruption was in every level. Um, pity corruption, high level, elite corruption, like every in every level of our, our lives. But um, we, we have a huge um, achievements in that direction. There is no small level corruption anymore. Uh, so the Georgia was made and made a really good name in fighting uh, and eliminating small level corruption. So we advanced in that direction. But at the same time with that, we had a, a serious problems with the protection of human rights, or with the ex free, free expression of the opinion, freedom of demonstrations, and etc. Freedom of judiciary and uh, things like that. But in that direction, there could be some improvements, but we are still struggling. And, and therefore, for the majority of Georgians, that, that, that this, this uh, point, this landmark decision by the European Commission to recognize the, our fight, our struggle, and our aspirations towards Europe, that's why it was so much rewarding. And uh, I want to see more rapid changes, more rapid improvements. Um, and I, I am really hopeful because Georgian society is such, is, as I'm witnessing and as I'm observing, has really grown up um, in terms that we are more demanding uh, to the authorities. And these demonstrations in March that I was describing, when the uh, people demonstrated against this Russian type foreign agents law, and the majority of the demonstrators were youth, the students, and it gives me hope. Uh, and strength that there is this um, pledge for democracy in the Georgian public, and we can we can be a very good partner for the European Union and for our neighbors.